I'm Lynn Wollston, a sci-fi fantasy writer, blogger, and nerd, and thanks for stopping by my channel today. I am back once again to do a writing tag, but I actually created this, so I wanted to take a moment to make a writing tag that was specific for authors who read. Because, as any good author will tell you, you must read, read, read. So this tag is specifically going to show you exactly how those author tubers and other people who are authors like on their blogs or whatnot, how they do their whole book selection process. So you can learn exactly what these authors are reading and why they are reading what they're reading. So without further ado, let's get to it. So these are going to be broken up into three categories. So the first category is book selection. Question number one, how do you decide what you're going to read next? Is it something that you're picking because it's trending or do you read in a specific genre or is it completely random? Well, I can tell you that for me, when it comes to my reading selection, I actually have a tendency to go with something that maybe isn't trending and I find that, you know, maybe there is like a book or a book series that is like gaining so much popularity. Um, I don't immediately just get on the bandwagon unless it's something that I've seen like, oh, okay, the premise of that book looks really awesome or in general, it just does seem like it fits into the genre that I read. Um, but I would say that most of the time, the more hype like a book gets, the more I'm kind of like leery about it. I guess that's just the rebel in me. <laughs> but I definitely say, obviously I write sci-fi and fantasy and so that's where I tend to gravitate towards. Um, I do also really like reading personal development books um, because I think that those are great books to kind of learn more about yourself. Um, and I definitely am an advocate for reading fiction as well as reading nonfiction. Question number two, how important is the cover? Do you judge a book by its cover? I'm gonna be honest. I'm gonna put it out there. Probably gonna get some hate for this. But yes, I do judge a book by its cover. That being said, it doesn't always have to mean that the cover has to be amazing. Sometimes just having a simple just title and the author's name will entice me as long as it's done in a really good way. And I find that it is something that I think authors should invest in, especially if you're self-publishing. And it's why when you're traditionally published, you know, you have these team of people that are working as, you know, their marketing gurus and everything. And so they will make a cover that is going to be catching the eye, especially with eBooks becoming so popular, you have to have a good cover. Now I have a couple of my favorite book covers that I can show you and you'll see that they are very different. So the first one that I have is Storm Dancer that is by Jay Kristoff. I love this cover. I saw this and was like, oh my gosh, I have to read this. And before even reading the back cover, I just knew like this was going to be a story that I wanted to read. I mean, you have a badass girl right there. She's got a katana. And then there's also the griffin. Like I just had to read this. And um, especially after reading the back cover, I was like, yes, I have to get this. But there's also another book cover that I absolutely love. This one is Clockwork Lives, and this is by Kevin J. Anderson and Neil Peart. This is one of my favorite books of all time. But as you can see, I mean, this is a hard cover, but it's just a very basic design that has, you know, like gold text and everything. But I was immediately drawn to this when I was at the bookstore. And again, after reading that back cover, I was like, yep, I sold, absolutely sold. So you can see that there, can be a difference where it doesn't always have to be this amazing image. It can be something that is more simple. And yes, I do judge a book by its cover. Question number three, do you read hardcovers, paperbacks, eBooks, or listen to audiobooks, or a combination of them? I will say that generally I prefer the paperbacks um, just because having a hardcover doesn't always make it so easy to carry around. Um, but I also always have to have at least one ebook on my phone so that when I am like standing in line somewhere or you know I'm just out and I kind of have like a few minutes to just kind of dive into something, I find that I would rather 
be reading a book rather than going like social media. So having an ebook on my phone is like the best. I do like hardcovers and especially if it's a book that I bought in a paperback that I love so much and maybe it does have amazing cover art, um, I will buy the hardcover in addition so I have two copies. As far as listening to audiobooks, I don't do that a ton um, and I am more open to it. Um, I just find that having the actual text in front of me like helps me concentrate so I don't just like zone out. Question number four, do you prefer series or standalones? I personally love series. I love just falling in love with these characters and being able to see in this epic journey where it takes them and I even like when they do series where it has like the prequels and everything in them so I definitely get attached to my characters and want to read more from them. Now we're going on to the second section which is while reading. So this is question number five. Do you binge read or take your time reading just reading a few chapters at a time? I would love if I had more time to just binge read books, but in reality, I don't. I have like little snippets of time here and there. And so what I do is I usually will read like a couple chapters. You know, I try to do that every single day. Um, and But if I am getting to the end of the book, and especially if like the pacing is just like so quick and everything, I find that I will stay up at night and binge read and then regret it in the morning. But typically when it's just my regular routine, I find that just reading a few chapters at a time helps and just keeps up with my lifestyle. Question number six. Do you use bookmarks or do you dog ear your pages? I don't dog ear. I, I'm one of those people that just, yeah, I don't like that. <laughs> so if you end up using a bookmark, the second part of this question is what do you use as a bookmark? I would love to if I had more of a collection of bookmarks, um, but in all honesty, what I find that I am just <laughs> in a really bad habit of is instead of using a really nice, fancy, beautiful bookmark, um, most of my books you will be able to see are like old receipts that are used as bookmarks or old envelopes, sometimes bills that I haven't paid. Um, or sometimes it'll be like index cards. I just find kind of random things that I'm using as bookmarks and I just think it's out of like I grab something because usually what happens is I'm reading a book and I get interrupted usually by my kids needing something, wanting something. And so I'll try to just grab whatever's around me and just shove it in there as a bookmark. And yeah, that's what I use. Question number seven. Do you take notes in your books or like highlight or is this forbidden? I will tend to not do that in books because I almost like, oh no, I don't want to ruin the book. But especially if it's a personal development book that I'm reading and there's just a lot of notes that um, I want to keep on handy in the book or especially if it's like a writing reference book then I will like highlight and like circle like hey this is important remember this um, and so that the next time I go to reread that book then I like know okay like yeah this was there for a reason um, so I would say it's more of a thing I do for nonfiction, but in actual fiction I don't tend to do if there's like a line that I love instead of marking the book I'll just like make a note and like you know just transpose it on some paper just to save the book <laughs> and now the third and final section is reaching the end question number eight how soon do you read a new book do you rush to another one or do you need time in between reading books I can say that usually if it's a series I'm reading, I have to rush to that other book. Usually, yeah, I will rush if it's in a series. If it's a standalone, then I kind of like, okay, what am I going to read next? And then I kind of like I'm picking and choosing. And so there's like a little bit of a stall there. But uh, generally, yeah, I will rush to another book. Question number nine. Do you write reviews for the books you've read, including bad reviews? Well, when I read a book, I usually, if especially if it's a book that I love, I want to be able to support that author to the best of my ability. And writing reviews really does help those authors. And 
I find that if it is a great book, then yes, I will go out there and write reviews. It's really hard to stay on top of all the different ways that you can be writing the reviews and leaving the reviews because there's a lot of avenues where these books are being promoted. Um, but I try to at least one place, you know, either on Goodreads or Amazon or, you know, some other site, the Barnes and Noble, I try to leave at least one review. When it comes to bad reviews, I don't like writing those. And finally, number 10, what's your favorite book to recommend to others? Well, there is a reason why I had shown you guys Clockwork Lives because this book is really great and I highly recommend it if you are a fan of fantasy because that's what this is, especially if you love steampunk because this is a steampunk book. And what I like about it so much is it is about a woman who um, she receives this weird inheritance with this blank book that she's supposed to fill in with other people's stories and so she has to go on this journey and fill this book with other people's stories and she has to do it by doing a drop of blood and then once the blood gets on the page it like tells their story and then she ultimately is going to put her story in it too and it's just a fantastic tale what also is cool is um it has chapters for each of the people that she get, gets their stories to and there's like actual illustrations so it's just a really cool fantastic book it's written in a very different way and i highly recommend it to people so that wraps up this tag and i just want to take the opportunity to say that i love doing these writing tags so i'm going to go ahead and tag a few of you to do this um, I'm going to tag Megan LaCroix, who just started on YouTube, um, and I'm also going to be tagging Meg Latour from the iWriterly team, and I will definitely have their links down below to their channel so you can check them out. But I'm also tagging all of you because I want to know on what you read, why you read it. So if you do make a post about this writing tag, go ahead and leave a link down in the comment section below, or you can tag me on social media so that I can see your video or your blog post whatever it may be and I'm looking forward to seeing all that comes into your book selection thanks so much for watching if you have any idea of a video that you would like to see me produce go ahead and leave that in the comment section below thanks again so much for checking out my channel and have a great day and until next video bye